Optimization problems can be a bit intimidating at first uh, if, you don't know, understand, if you don't understand how to approach the problem. But really, it's quite simple just following three main steps. I mean, the first, problem, or first part is to just understand the problem. You have to understand what it's asking. Understand the problem. And then you really need to, like, you understand, like, like what, is, what is the point? Like, what do I need to figure out? And then you, then you should draw a diagram. Draw a diagram. And then the next point is to, is to put all the variables. Like in this question, we have to, in this question, a swimmer is 500 meters from the closest point on the shore. And, you know, they can swim at 4 meters a second, walk at 6 meters a second, uh, and they're trying to reach a cottage 1,800 meters from the closest point on the shore. Like, it's obviously going to be a mixture of walking and swimming, and we have to figure out the fastest method. So, like, the distance to walk, you know, we're trying to, we have to make our definitions of variables. So we have to define the variables. And then, once we define, you know, the swim distance, the walking distance, we need to put them in terms of a single variable. So put in terms of one variable. Put in terms of a single variable. And really, this optimization problems, they're just really applied uh, maximum and minimum. We're just trying to find the maximum and minimum points of slopes. And if we can make a function that does that, then the question is quite simple. So let's understand the problem. You know, we're, we're trying to get to the cottage. And so the swimmer is right here. This will be the swimmer. Swimmer. And they're 500 meters from the shore. And on the shore, they are 1,800 meters or 1,800 meters from a cottage. So that means that this distance here is 1,800 meters. So we need to define variables. So we've, we've understood the problem. We've drawn a diagram. Let's define the variables. And I'll, I'll define the variables in terms of a single variable to make this a bit easier. So we know the swim speed. I shall do this in a different color. Swim speed. Swim speed, walking speed, and we need the walking distance, and the swim distance. Now, the swim speed is 4 meters a second, as the question states. The walking speed is 6 meters per second. Walking distance. So, so here's where it gets tricky. We have to figure out the walking distance and the swim distance in terms of a single variable. Well, we know that the swimmer is going to swim at an angle. It's the only thing that makes sense. And they'll reach a point on the shore. And then this distance here is the point at which you'll walk. So if we define, if we define a point here between the two, I'll just draw this in a different color. If we define this point here as x, then the walking distance is going to be 1,800 meters minus x. So if x was 100 meters, if this, this distance here was 100 meters, then we'd be walking 1,700 meters. So our walking distance is going to be 1,800 minus x. And then our swim distance, because this is the closest point on shore, right? Well, let's say our swimmers back here, so are, are slightly off, but you know, it's going to be in an angle like this. And so this, well, this is slightly off. Let me just fix this. So we have our swimmer here where it makes sense. And that distance here is 500 meters. So this green line is going to be our swim distance. You know, so if, you know, Pythagoras says that if it would be, you know, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we had 500, which is this distance squared, so it's 500 squared plus x squared equals the distance, distance to swim squared. 
So really, we need to take the square root of 500 squared plus x squared. So our swim distance is 500 squared plus x squared. And you take the square root of that. So we need to make a function that we can calculate the minimum of. So we will make a function of time. So the total time, the total time equals the walk time plus swim time. And that, that's pretty simple. I mean, it, it really is quite simple. So you take the, the total time plus the swim time. And since, you know, t or time equals distance divided by velocity, then we, need, we know the swim distance, we know the walk distance, and we know how fast we're going at those times. So we go the total time equals the walk time, which is going to be 1800 minus x, divided by our walk speed, which is 6 meters per second, plus our swim distance, which is the 500 squared plus x squared square root, divided by 4 meters per second. And so I'll call the total time function t. So what we have to do is calculate the zeros of this function. We have to solve for zero. Now, the total time is going to be some numerical value, which means it's a constant. And if we take the derivative, then that constant will become zero. So t prime, we take the derivative, take the derivative. So t prime equals zero, which equals 1800 minus x. Well, oops. We're trying, to, we're trying to find the derivative. The derivative of 1800 minus x, well, 1800 divided by 6 is 0. That's a constant. But negative x, the derivative of x is 1, or negative 1. So it becomes negative 1 divided by 6 plus, now, the square root of 500 squared divided by 4. This is a bit more tricky, but the derivative of that is 2x divided by 8 times the square root of 500 squared plus x squared. Now, we can sort of simplify this and go, well, you know, 2 divided by 8 is just 1 over 4. And we're trying to solve for 0, since 0 equals this. Then we can go when we, you know, we just bring over the 1 divided by 6, or negative 1 divided by 6, we get 1 divided by 6 equals x divided by 4 root 500 squared plus x squared. Now, if we divide both sides by x, divided by x, divided by x, then what we get is 1 divided by 6x equals 1 divided by 4 500 squared plus x squared. Now, since we both have the inverses, we can just flip the whole equation, which will give us 6x equals 4 square root 500 squared plus x squared. And then, to get rid of this square root, this nasty square root, we can just square both sides. So this becomes 6 times 6 is 36 times x squared equals 4 times 4 is 16 times 500 squared plus x squared. So we need to expand this, you know, times 16 and times 16. So it becomes 36x squared equals 16 times 500 squared plus 16x squared. Now we have an x squared term on both sides, so we can just add them together or subtract them. So we're going minus 16x to this side, and we're taking minus 16x to this side, x, x squared, and that leaves us with 20x squared equals 16 point, or times 500 squared. Then, if we just divide by 20, 
we find that, I'll just bring this up here, that x squared equals 16 times 500 squared divided by 20. Then we take the square root of that. So then, you know, x equals the square root of 16 times 500 squared. Oop, I'll just write that. That's 500 squared divided by 20. And if you plug this into your calculator, or if you're really smart, then x equals 447.2 meters. So what this means is that since we had the swimmer 500 meters away from the shore, and then the shore was 1,800 meters from the cottage, that since our walking distance, our walking distance, our walk distance was 1,800 meters minus x, means that our new walk distance will be 1,800 minus 447.2, which equals 1,800 minus 447.2. Equals 1352.8 meters. Now, that's our walking distance. Our swim distance was 500 squared plus 447.2 squared. And take the square root of that, which is 1500 squared. Wait, sorry, 500 squared plus 447.2 squared. Take the square root of that. So our, our, our swim distance, swim distance equals 670.8 meters. So this is the shortest route to get from point A to point B, to get from that where that swimmer is to the cottage. It involves going this much and going that much. And that, that's really it. All we have to do is break it down into a function that is the walk time plus the swim time, find the derivative, solve for zero, and then we have our shortest route.